Hi, good afternoon. Welcome. We are here in studio today. We're doing some fall previews, talking sports with Val. Val is here with me, of course. And first off, congratulations, Val. Tomorrow, three years. Uh, it's been a it's been an interesting three years, uh, starting off in the middle of a pandemic and kind of getting a lot of uh, interesting uh, stuff going on over this last three years. Yeah, and uh, I just remember having to wear a mask for a, my first year and a half here. I didn't, and it was weird because you want to introduce yourself to your your new fellow uh, fellow employees, and yet nobody saw my face for the first year and a half because I was wearing a mask all the time. But boy, it's been such a great time here, and I'm just so uh, fortunate to be here because people who are just so dedicated to covering high school sports, and and I, I just feel so highly appreciated here. Yeah, it's a it's a great place to work, you know, and uh, you know RTC in general has has been fun, and it's it's been neat to see as the company has grown uh, over the last few years as well. And some of the stuff that they're doing, it's it's been really fun to watch, and you know, I, my wife says I don't have a job, I have a hobby, but I I love my job because mm-hmm. it is kind of you know waking up every morning and to do what we love to do. Yeah, and it's a uh, it's a great thing that we get to do this, and uh, really appreciate RTC for uh, their dedication to our local high school athletes. And uh, I, I hope that the I hope that the uh, athletes realize, you know, not saying that we're the end all be all, but I hope they realize what kind of uh, you know coverage they're getting because it's it's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. It's pretty cool to see, and uh, it's just fun to be a part of it. Yeah, for sure. And with Culver over the last three years, it's interesting because we know so many people over there already. And it was, you know, three years ago we were talking about, boy, this Shane Schumann, he's only a sophomore. Mm -hmm. But watch out for this kid. And then two years ago, is this Shane Schumann? He's only a junior. Watch out for this kid. Yeah. And watch out for, and and then it was like, we talk about Shane Schumann a lot, but what about the rest of these juniors? The whole junior class is pretty impressive. Yeah. And then last year we were talking about, man, Shane Schumann is incredible yeah but what about the rest of this senior class yeah and now here we are it's 2023 and shane schumann is no longer <sighs> right he's no longer there but he sure left his mark but he um, left his, yeah you know leading all-time leading rusher uh, left an eight and five team that lost to north judson in the sectional championship and uh boy he's you know, talk about big shoes to fill there's gonna be some really big L- shoes literally to fill. yeah yeah and uh first year head coach austin faust is gonna have uh gonna have his work cut out for him right but um you know uh, i talked with austin faust the other day and uh what i sensed uh, or, or what i what, what he told me was that you know they've got uh it's gonna be a different type of offense because not only did they graduate Shane schumann but they graduated their quarterback in jason cadle mm-hmm. and they graduated <laughs> you know their their lineman he's I mean, even dangerous on the celebrations right. when you talk about Devin Burkett, Ben Lee and Stephen Pugh I mean that's that's yeah. a huge part of your offensive line yeah so how do they you know how do they I mean first of all it's um, developing a style of play what style of play do we want to run and then the next part is just getting bigger and stronger along the line um, now the um, I talked with Austin Faust. He said that Mike Zayner, it wasn't, it wasn't a done deal. It wasn't like they lost to North Judson and then the next day Coach Zayner just said, "Well, I'm I'm done." He he really thought about it, and mm-hmm. it, he um, he really didn't decide until around Christmas time that he he was not going to come back. And then um, Austin Faust was hired in March, and so um, you know they they do have some players with returning experience who got some experience as young players last year. Um, the key player, I think, on this year's team is going to be Ethan Binion. Right there, yeah. And you saw him, and he really, for a sophomore and kind of a veteran team, he really stood out last year. Mm-hmm. I mean, he he was like, hey, I'm I'm coming here, I'm coming too, and I want to I want to play with you guys, and I want to be a part of this as well. And you know, he's the leading returning rusher. You can see the, I'm sure he's going to have the ball in his hands a lot. And then you got a the two sophomore twins, Jonas and Caleb McEwen, are going to be big parts of this offense as well. You know, Jonas is a sophomore. You know, they're, they're both sophomores. Jonas is going to be the quarterback. Caleb is going to be one of his main targets as a wide receiver. Um, you know, last year they kind of combined the the power T that Coach Zayner had with some of the spread concepts that that Austin Faust has. I mean, Austin Faust has gone to a lot of these coaching clinics and coaching camps, learning the spread. And now, and he 
he ran some of that at, when he was the coach at John Glenn. Now, how much will he do here at Culver? Mm-hmm. And but I mean, the key is going to be, uh, but a lot of, in a lot of ways, the key is developing that line to help give Jonas some time to to make those passes. Well, and I, I think that's one of those things too with Coach Zayner and and having a player like Shane Schumann and, and the backs that he had. Uh, I think they're that offense that they ran and you talk about running out of a phone booth i mean they yeah. they were you know the linemen were uh, foot to foot i mean there was no splits between your guard and your tackle and your center and right um, and tight ends were almost like an extra tackle oh yeah yeah i mean mm-hmm. it was just another lineman there and mm-hmm. but you know when you have a power running game like that that's kind of what you do you line mm-hmm. up and you say okay try and stop us yeah and you know they <laughs> most of the teams couldn't i mean you know mm-hmm. shane was just so powerful and you know, that backfield is just, a, you know, a thing of beauty. But when you have uh, a little bit different style, you, you need to adjust your offense a little bit, and I think that's where they're going to be this year. Right, and I so uh, I think not only the McEwen's going to be key, but watch for Hayden Parker, who I think is going to be a big part of that. And Hayden had a great baseball season in the spring. I think it's going to be a key on this defense as well. Um it's going to be a it's going to be a quick strike offense. It's going to be a, 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 a guys who can go seventy or eighty yards. Because remember, they also lost Emiliano Ortiz to graduation. Mm-hmm. He was kind of their he was another one of their big play guys. Right. And so, uh, is this a, is this a team that's going to be able to go seventy or eighty yards in a play, or is this a team that's going to have to grind out drives? Yeah. Because I mean, when you have a spread offense, you don't necessarily need a bunch of hogs on the offensive line. You just need to have some guys who can hold their block, you know, maintain their block for a couple of seconds, and give Jonas some time to kind of scan the field and throw that quick pass. Yeah, but you got to be able to hold that block for right. a couple of seconds. Right. Yeah. Easier said than done. Right. Right. You know, when you're when you're undersized, it, it's a it's a challenge. But mm-hmm. um, so there there's going to be some uh, some question marks and some uh, some holes and some you know and they have a, a you know. Obviously, a, a big game right out of the gate. They play, you know, every year against North Judson in that first game, and uh, you know that's a that's right. another team. You know, obviously it's a conference game, I but mean, they graduated a lot there as well. Yeah, I mean, we talk so much about uh, we've talked a lot about Knox and Laville leaving the conference and how that's going to transform the Hoosier North once North Miami and South Central join next year, but. North Judson isn't going anywhere. Yeah. And North Judson, Culver is 0-8 against North Judson the last four years. North yeah. Judson has not called around in the sectional the last four years. Yeah. And three out of the four years was in the sectional final. Yeah. So, there's still a big problem. Uh, and we'll see how well they can compete uh, against the Jays. Uh, you know, you know, I mean, North Judson has just, I mean, they've, they've been, able, I mean, really not many of these games have even been close. They lost, it was 54 to nothing in last year's yeah. sectional final. So we'll see, I mean, uh, how Culver can stand up. Uh, you know, Culver's made a lot of um, uh, improvements in the school and the school facility. Um, you know, Coach Faust showed me the, I went to Culver, Coach Faust showed me the locker room, the, the weight room, mm-hmm. and they're getting a new locker room as well. I mean, the mm-hmm. facilities have improved so much. Over the years, so I'll be curious to see uh, how much that improves. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really uh, wanting to see I mean, the gym. The, the weight room was like a closet, yeah. like five, ten years ago. Now it's it's a real locker room. I mean, it's a real weight room. Yeah. And on top of that, they're they're working the locker room and the gym. So it's um, uh, it's kind of a new day at Culver. I spent some time in that closet. <laughs> uh, this is another team here. You know, as you're watching the highlights from last year, South Central. Uh, they're going to be joining the conference for football uh, come next year as well. So, you know, that's it's already a team that obviously uh, Culver plays, you know, at least every year. They played twice last year. But, um, you know, that's going to be another one of those uh, teams that, you know, they, they can put together some teams. Obviously last year was a little bit of a down year for South Central. But as you transition out of LaVille and, and Knox, uh, you know, North Miami and, and South Central coming in for football, it, it's gonna it's gonna be an interesting it's gonna be dynamic. More of a ba- it's gonna be more of a balanced conference. I sure, think. sure. And some of those teams, you know, North Miami driving mm-hmm. to uh, South Central. That's that's gonna be a little bit of a haul, right? So, and you know, another thing we we don't we we you know whenever a school has a coaching change and kind of one of the first things I ask the new coach, and almost regardless of sport, is so what's your feeder system like or. Or what are your hopes for your feeder system? Well, Austin Faust is the new coach, and who's running the middle school program at Culver? 
Mike Zayner. Yes, he. Yeah. Yeah. So he's gonna because okay. he's got a son now who's of that age, and yeah. so he's gonna be working with the middle school kids. And boy, what an advantage to have that. Uh, right. Where you can not only go to him for advice, but have have him running your middle school program. Hey, this guy in our middle school doesn't know anything about football. What's going on? Yeah, yeah they, you don't have to worry about that. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, so, uh, you know, it, it's going to be an adjustment, obviously. Uh, first couple of games, we'll see how they do. But, um, you know, come off of a really good season, just got to give them a lot of credit for that 8-5 and five year last year. And, right. Uh, they just, had that win at Pioneer, which was yeah, a historic, historic win. Yeah, win, first time ever. And uh, that goes way back, too. So mm-hmm. uh, They beat Winnemac last year, yeah. which was a nice win. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The uh, the volleyball team, uh, you know, had a nice record last year, sixteen and twelve. Um, they've got a lot of pieces coming back, and you know, Coach uh, Barrett uh, has got to be excited. But then she's also got to be like, okay, we're in the Hoosier North Conference, and we've got Caston and Pioneer sitting there, you know, as conference opponents. So. Her yeah, excitement's that, probably a little bit, uh, and then Triton as well, who uh, actually knocked them out of the sectional last year, is a, another conference right, opponent. Right, with Addison Beers, who's one of the best. I mean, we're talking about Cass and Pioneer with great teams. Addison Beers of Triton might be the best player in the conference. She mm-hmm. doesn't play for Cass or Pioneer, so yeah, yeah I, you don't have to worry about overconfidence with with at, at Culver because you know that every conference match is going to be tough. Yeah, but you look at this team; it's interesting because, I mean, you got. You know, four key seniors when you talk about Grace Sieber and Avery Garland and Shelby Olivares. I mean, Shelby, I thought, was so improved last year. And then Willow Harrington, I think she really came on as yeah, well. Yeah. And then, but then it's kind of, it's almost like the class of 2024 supports the class of 2025 because the, the superstars are that junior class. Mm-hmm. When you talk about Bryn Barrett and Tyra King and Meredith Gordon and Olivia Overmeyer and Ashley Pugh and Lainey Hawes. Yeah. So it's, it's an interesting dynamic there. And it's interesting, I mean, we talk about Bryn. I mean, she can just play any spot on the court just because she's played so much volleyball. Right. I mean, you need her to hit, she can hit. You need her to set, she can set. She's one of the best blockers on the team. I mean, she's mm-hmm. she's just so, they're just, she's just so multi-talented. And, you know, there were times, you know, when they might struggle and, and Coach Barrett, when she would just, she would call timeout and then just let the players sort out. She wouldn't say anything. Mm-hmm. But she would just say such a. She would just say, "Hey, you figure it out. Don't let the players talk it out." And I think she put a lot of responsibility in the players. And I think that really helped. But then again, you lose some of those seniors like Megan Pearl to graduation. So how will they? And Lucy Overmeyer, unfortunately, Lucy. Uh, I think her volleyball season was kind of injury plagued last year. She mm-hmm. had healthy as the year went on uh, for softball. But um, by the time softball came around, but yeah, I mean it's um, pulling out those. Close matches. I think you got better at that, but now it's you know lack of experience. That's not going to be that's not a viable yeah, excuse. This yeah. team is an experienced volleyball team that's played a lot together, and they know they know the expectations and they've built a culture. So I'm curious if they, if they make that take that next step this year. Yeah, conference wise, it's going to be really tough for them. Obviously, uh, it's just going to be a tough conference for everybody. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, what can they do in that sectional? Because, you know, they, they've got that uh, road bump, uh, you know, like we talked about. Right. You know, they've got that road bump as well. You know, Triton's kind of been that uh, right. stopping and Marquette, point. Right, and then Marquette Catholic won the sectional last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's not the, the Marquette Catholic program that they were 10 years ago. They're good, but they're right, not. Right, right. They're not. They were, they were 10 years ago. They were Five unbeatable. and six state championship right. runs, yeah. Um, so, um, I mean, again, it's just a matter of confidence and communication. I think that's... It has a lot to do with it because, because from an athleticism standpoint, I think they're right there. I mean, yeah, they'll miss again the senior, the graduated seniors. They'll miss, but it's a pretty athletic group that they have coming back. And you know, with Seber as the setter, I think that if, if she, the better that she does, that that can leave more swings for for Bryn Barron. And the thing about Bryn is that she can again her her skill level. I mean, she can hit the ball from basically anywhere on the court. Mm-hmm. I mean. Opposite, outside, middle, back row. I mean, it doesn't. I mean, just wherever. Yeah. I mean, she, Bryn, she wants those big, the big swings. You yeah. Know, when it's twenty four, twenty three, she wants she wants the ball. Right. And she's the the quintessential coach's kid, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, she thinks the game uh, as well as she plays the game, but athletically, she's she's very gifted as well. Right. And you can see, right. And it's it's always interesting to watch Bryn kind of point out to her teammates where they need to be mm-hmm. i mean she knows where everybody needs to be not just herself yeah 
And that's that's got to be a, a big help too for Coach Barrett because mm-hmm. you know she's basically got an extension of herself you know out there on the floor. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, you know, the the sky's the limit. I think for this team, and can they can they compete for the conference? Can they, you know, challenge Caston and Pioneer in that Hoosier North conference? Can they compete for that sectional and and possibly beyond? You know, so um, yeah, five freshmen this year, two in the program. Oh. Probably all likely to play JV with Olivia Davis, Brooke Davis, Sophie Grossman Norris, um, Karen Doolin, and Haley Parker. Mm-hmm. Um, Hayden Loot is the one. So- there's only one sophomore in the varsity roster. That's Hayden Loot, mm-hmm. and we saw Hayden last year in the swimming pool and on the softball fe- field. She's one of the best athletes in the school, mm-hmm. I think. Mm-hmm. So uh, we'll see how she can make a contribution volleyball wise. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Uh, really looking forward to uh, to that and uh, getting some good coverage there. You know, our crew up there at Culver. Uh, you know, Justin Croy, the uh, the TV and radio teacher up there, has done a, a fin- fantastic job. And really looking forward to another uh, great season of uh, Cavalier Culver Cavalier TV up there. And, yeah. Um, boys soccer. Um, you know kind of a, a shortened season last year they didn't uh, really have the numbers as they started the season and and didn't really get going for better than a month i think before they were really going and they ended up at one and seven they well, got a they got I, a new coach I this year good news adam niece is the coach and yeah. you know adam niece is going to be he is going to pound the pavement and they have 16 kids out for soccer nice. so that those issues from last year are over 16 is a very good number for culver it's as big as they've had in a while so that's the that's the first bit of good news good. because this yeah. is, you know, as we've said, I mean, Argus is moving into the conference in 2024, and um, you know you're going to have to have some players if you want to uh, be able to compete with them and, and try to win a conference championship. But again, uh, Adam Neese, you know, he knows these kids from basketball. Uh, the niece, everybody knows who the nieces are, and mm-hmm. Culver Athletics. They've got three, you know players that he calls team leaders in terms of you get two seniors in Landon Stevens and Reese Harrell who have both played a lot of sports over the years and you get a junior in David Height who we've seen him on the basketball court yeah. but he's also a pretty good soccer player and then you've got you know three kind of newcomers when you talk about Joseph Callender who's a junior Scotty Banks who's a sophomore and you've got Johnny Villegas who's a freshman so we'll see you know add them to the mix because boy, they, you know, Ashton Macedonio did so much for that team, but he's moved on, and it, you know they also had Joey Pizer, who graduated, and Owen Falk, who graduated. So this was a team they they needed some numbers because they were right. down to about, I think six of the eleven they had last year were seniors. So yeah. I mean, they graduated a lot. So yeah. uh, he said numbers are doing very well, uh, sixteen kids. He said we're getting more every day, so maybe maybe uh, that number will rise. Uh, we, he said we've got a great mix of veterans and a few newcomers to high school softball. High school soccer. High school soccer. You got soccer. softball yeah. in the brain Softball's today. Softball's in the yeah. brain today. Yeah. Wonderful thing is all of our kids have played in our youth program growing up. Excited to continue our, to grow our youth and build something special here at Culver. Yeah. So this is, I mean, Adam Neese is going to want to, you know, he's not here for a year or two and then just move on. I mean, he, building Culver soccer is important to him. Yeah. And so, um, you know, you know, we'll, we'll see how he does. But, but, I mean, the fact that they're up to 16 kids is a great start. Yeah, and, and Culver soccer, you know, it does not obviously have the history of an Argus soccer of 60 years, but mm. I can remember, you know, the, the program started when I was in junior high, and um, they had some pretty immediate success and against Argus. And, yeah. you know, they came in, they won a couple sectionals, and uh, so they've had, uh, they've had some success over the years. And, you know, it, it's good to see the, the numbers back up there and, and you know, Adam is just going to, you know, he's going to put everything into it. You know yeah. that, right? Yeah. You know he's going to put everything he has into that yeah. uh, he said, he position. Said, he said, we want to create an excitement around Cavalier soccer. We want to play every game with passion, pride, respect, and sportsmanship. We were, we're fortunate to get to play in a conference because Adam, when he was, when he went to Culver, was Culver in a soccer conference? I don't, was the, NS, was the NSC anything? Yeah, yeah. It might I mean, been, they, don't, uh, they don't have a lot of teams that had soccer, yeah. obviously, but yeah. Yeah. We're fortunate to play in a conference, and I want to see us have a good showing this year. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it's it's like you said, um, you know, the the, di- di- the dynamic, if I can yeah. say that, the dynamic of the uh, conference is obviously going to take a big turn next year as Argus and OD come in. 
Exactly. And North Miami, they're they're not bad either. True. True. Yeah, you, you kind of don't look at that as much with uh, with soccer, but yeah, they they had a really good season last year. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know where they're going to be this year just yet, but uh, mm-hmm. yeah. So yeah, it's it's great to see the numbers, so they can uh, they can get going right away. They don't have to wait for a month and and uh, you know right. only play eight games and. But um, right, yeah. I mean, they graduated Landon Kaikendall along with you know Falk and Pizer and Macedonio. So yeah, it's, they've got a lot to replace. But uh, again, you know, Adam and Nice will be all in. Yeah. On the on the girl side of things, you know, Adam's brother AJ has been the the coach there for a little while. They had a uh, spectacular season last year, going twelve three and one. But uh, you know they dropped that at the Argus sectional to that Bremen team that we talked about that was just oh, what really a heart, good. heartbreaking yeah. loss for Culver. Yeah. But uh, the program that AJ Nice has built is just so solid. But uh, you know with with the graduation of Kaylee Hamilton, I, I don't think it's an exaggeration to say she's one of the greatest players in Culver girls soccer history. Probably right up there. I can I can think of a few that graduated in the fourteen neighborhood that were pretty good as well. Yeah. But uh, yeah, she probably scored what. About, Again, I'm guessing here, but probably scored over 70 goals in her career. Yeah. Uh, but you just saw the highlight of one girl who was back, and that's uh, Giselle Villegas. And she is uh, she's right there in the mix with the best players in our area. She's you know a first-team All-Conference or her, her first-team uh, All-RTC player. Yeah. I mean, she's right there with with you know somebody like Lily Hines from Argus. Um, you know, and there might even be more on her plate this year without having Kaylee around. Um, this team is going to have. Um, six seniors. Giselle is one of the six. The other five are Megan England, Ariana Vela, um, Grace Barth, Kenzie Dowd, and Avery Keller. Um, but you know this team. You know they. I think the, the the underrated part of this team was their defense. Yeah, they were really. Yeah, they were. You know, and then they had. A, you know, they brought in a transfer from Kennedy Jackson, but who did a great job. And then to have her along with Amaya Williams back there. Uh, you know, they did such a good job of just keep keeping that area clean you know they teams had a hard time kind of breaking through their defense um you know and then you had four juniors in addition to the six seniors with cassidy banks getting her back healthy will be key because she basically missed all of last year with an acl injury and then maddie hamilton kaylee's younger sister you know i I expect i wouldn't be surprised if she made that big jump and then amaya williams as a defender and then in, in goal, Katie Scout, and she's a junior, but she has a lot of experience. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I was I was impressed. You know, I did a couple Culver games last year, and I thought that combination with Williams and Scout, and mm-hmm. you know, they they did uh, lock down. You you talk about some of the numbers right. they put up on offense, but yeah. their defense was really right. good and as well. Barth was part of that defense as well. Yeah, yeah. And then you know, on that sophomore class, look up for Brianna Hamilton. Mm-hmm. I think she could play a big role. Yeah. Uh, still two Hamiltons, right? Yeah, two Hamiltons yeah. left. There were three, now they're two. Now down to two. But uh, Kaylee Hamilton now at IU South Bend. So have a, now you can say, hey, we had a player now playing college soccer. I mean, I think it's going to mean a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, that's big for mm-hmm. them. So, um, yeah, looking forward to it. Again, uh, you know, they, they go to Argus for sectional, so you you got to look at that. You know, Argus is always formidable in that sectional. You, we talked about Bremen in that sectional. You know, mm-hmm. they were very tough last year, and they were very young. Um, you know, LaVille, they, they always find a way to kind of put things together by the end of the year. So, you know, it, it's not going to be an easy sectional by any means. And, you know, as we talked about on the boys' side, you, you talk about it on the girls' side, you know, as 24, 25 rolls around, you're adding Argus mm-hmm. into that mix for uh, for the conference now as well. So that's going to it's gonna be interesting for yeah. for girls' soccer in the Hoosier North. Yeah. So not as many, uh, you know, not as many teams. Obviously, Winnemac is co-ed, Caston's co-ed, Pioneer does not have soccer, so you know, a smaller uh, conference dynamic for, for girls' soccer. Right. So uh, what about um, golf and, and cross-country for Culver? Culver has two girls out for golf, um, a senior in Emily Hillman and a sophomore in Olivia Peterson. Okay. They're coached by Josh Pugh, who's also the assistant principal. Josh also coaches the boys' golf team in the spring. So, um, So two girls so far this year. Okay. Um, the golf team. And then uh, cross country. Mike Bushman is the new coach. 
Okay. Mike yeah, is, we know Mike well. We know Mike very well. Yeah. He's he's coached. I don't know how much cross country, but he's coached just about everything else. He's right. coached track. He's coached wrestling. Yeah. And now he's coaching cross country. We're. It's kind of a. I haven't been able to talk to Mike um, so far this this fall. Uh, we do know that a lot of those girls who ran cross country were also soccer players. Who I think we told that story. Basically, it was kind of a deal that Rose uh-huh. Peterson made. Right. Rose was like, "Okay, I'll play soccer if you run cross country," and they it actually was what was happened. Um, so Giselle Villegas did run cross country last year, along with the two Hamilton sisters. Actually, all three Hamiltons wound up running cross country, but again, the one graduates. So they've got one. Fr- um, there was one girl who ran as an eighth grader last year, Savannah Harrington, who is going to be a freshman this year. So we'll see if she comes out. Um, so, it, but it's kind of unclear as to who Culver has on the girl side. On the boys' side, I think we mentioned that their middle school cross country team was really good, mm-hmm. and now they've got five. There were five boys who ran last year as eighth graders. Okay. So, how many of those five will be running on the varsity this year? Right. If they do, they could be a really good team, and I think even be in the mix for a conference championship. I think they're that good. Yeah. Yeah. Even though they're they're they're, they're very young, there's one returnee that we think will be back, and that's Adam Peterson. Adam is a sophomore. He um, does double duty. He runs cross country and he plays soccer. Yeah. Well, looking forward to that. And, uh, you know, obviously, like you said, Mike Bushman, he's coached about everything. So, uh, yeah. you know, track cross country is, is not out of the uh, the realm of his capabilities. Mm-hmm. So, all right. Looking forward to some, uh, some Cavalier sports here this fall. We're going to be following, obviously, the football team. Uh, they're going to open up next Friday at home versus Judson, so we'll have that one on Culver TV. And then next Thursday, we're going to have uh, Culver at Caston for volleyball, so mm-hmm. we're going to get that. Try and get a couple of uh, soccer matches in there as well. I know I've got some on the schedule for uh, Culver versus uh, Argus and, and Rochester uh, you know, coming up. So looking forward to that here as the uh, season gets kicked off. So. Any other Culver notes that you want to go over before we go? I think that's about all I have. All right. So uh, that'll do it for Culver. We'll be back next week and uh, do our normal talking sports with Val for you. And we'll, uh, you know, preview, obviously, everything that's going on. We'll talk a little bit about the volleyball match and, and move on from there. Thanks for tuning in.